These two grown men had never seen The Simpsons How the fuck's that even happened The two grown men on a mission now So buckle up and just strap in I will survive Oh, as long as I know I love I know I'll stay alive I've got all my life to live And I've got all my love to give And I'll survive These two grown men had never seen The Simpsons It's America's Barley Basket Welcome to episode 113 of America's Barley Baskets. Uh, my name is Nathan Fulsebuck. Sitting next to me virtually is Marlon Wells. Hello, Nathan. Hello, Marlon. Was that your robot voice? It was my robot voice. How I was liked it? it. I, was, I was pretty into it. Is it like fun robot voice, like robot butler, or like Hal from 2001, kind of chilling? Nope. Like. <laughs> No, what it was Jetsony. Yeah. It was Jetsony. I was okay. into the I was into the robot voice. More beat bop boop than like end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little more a little more rosy and a little less Dalek. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope that I can make it far enough that when the singularity comes, I can be the voice of it. Like <laughs> Yeah, is that is that your dream voice <laughs> acting gig? Yeah. We're going to upload your soul, be bop boop. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to voice the robots at the end of humanity. Yeah. <laughs> We're all out of Android bodies. We're going to put you in this Bluetooth toaster for a couple of years. <laughs> but when we get more of the bodies back for the factory, I assure you, you'll be one of the first to be notified. <laughs> Holy shit, being a toaster. <laughs> <laughs> well you can still work remotely but that's really all you can do like we don't like to it's, use the s word here it's time Apple. to harvest all of your inside liquids to yeah. fuel our robots <laughs> boop, yeah. Boop, boop. Yeah. <laughs> that's all you're you're in your apartment the only thing that changes is a week into it the fucking body harvesters come and throw your body in a wheelbarrow <laughs> <laughs> just, pick you right up out of the recliner yeah. you're like, hey hey what's what's going on here yeah. or do they have a machine they bring up and they mulch you right there like, <laughs> just fling your husk back onto the floor <laughs> they got all your liquids <laughs> uh, just lay in there like an empty windbreaker yeah. just... hey you, you fellas want some toast <laughs> It's it's my primary function. Oh my god! Phew. I for one, some... I embrace the future. Yeah, I'm with it. Bring on the. I'm ready to like. I, you can put you can put robot parts in me today. I don't yeah. care. Yeah, the uh, I have my factory parts. My AC Delco ain't that good. <laughs> <laughs> I can stay for some fa aftermarket. I was about to say I'm ready for some aftermarkets. Let's get some. Yeah. Let's get some some Ed Hardy seat covers on this yeah. bitch. You got a fucking sun visor, or moon roof, <laughs> <laughs> a Razorback, <laughs> Safari mirrors, like yeah. whatever we got to do. Rocker panels. Change this thing up. Yeah, it. Uh, <laughs> it I'm was, about done. I figure. <laughs> I had a good run. Yeah. Just a lemon, like lemon right out of the factory. Yeah. Speaking of segues, we got Simpsons to talk <laughs> about this week, buddy. What season are we in, Marlon? We're in season 26 Ooh. of The Simpsons. Uh, disco season, we've decided, as you could tell. Beautiful, flawless. <laughs> I was thinking you were going to pile adjectives upon that, but... <laughs> Oh, no, no, not right. at all. I'm not going to lie to the good people. <laughs> <laughs> I will leave it for them to decide. <laughs> oh, God. They've decided already. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a significant portion of listeners that wish we wouldn't do that in, that <laughs> song, in the theme song. We don't open those emails. I'd wager one of them is, is Chase Raider, who does the theme music. <laughs> like, you hey guys, I made a whole thing for you. I don't know why you need to do this. Gotta slop it up. We're doing five episodes, as we always do. We're starting with episode five of season 26, and that is Opposites of Frack. Nathan, we have a goddamn Burns episode. Yeah, can you imagine it? 
Where it's were you at? Time. Well, you were a different man the last time we had a Burns episode. <laughs> literally, all of my cells have fallen yep. away and regenerated. <laughs> yeah. I am literally a different person. <laughs> all new bones for Marlin since the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh bones. <laughs> Uh, we start out marginally spoiling Homer, uh, but but it's not Pork Chop Tuesday or Gravy Thursday. <laughs> it's very funny. That's something that w- we dealt with more early, early on, is Homer's love of pork chops. That comes up a lot early. Yeah, and it's, I think it comes up twice in this batch he's yep. eating pork chops. I, I like a pork chop. Don't I get it twisted. I'm already thinking about them right now. That got me thinking, I need to purchase pork chops. Pork chops are good. Pork chops are 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 relatively lean and they're cheap as dirt. Go yeah, buy yourself give, pork chops. Yeah, they get pork chops can be bought at shockingly low prices. Go to a butcher shop. They will beg you to take some pork chops. Just take, take a few of these chaps. Uh. <laughs> hey, hey mister, how come you are knowing the chaps? <laughs> <laughs> who is this character? Who is your? Who is this butcher character? <laughs> Apparently, it's uh, it's John Travolta and Staying Alive. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch the hair. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta take in these chops. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Uh, she's doing all this, spoiling him because she has bad news, which is that Patty and Selma are going to be living with the Simpsons. And of course, Homer, no fan of Patty and Selma's. Uh, and he he's like, OK, like the way he gets out of this is like, yes, you can stay here provided you don't smoke. He pretends to care about the health of his children for <laughs> just a moment in order to give them this this ultimatum. Can't smoke, but. It's fine if you stay here. Which, because he Cut. thinks that me- that they cannot function. There's no way. Yep. Yep. And we learn that he's pretty much right. Mm-hmm. You know, like they try to go outside, but it's raining. Uh, they're they're sitting around just in a nick fit all the time. Uh, Homer puts up thousands of smoke detectors. <laughs> This is a family that struggles financially, but he has a thousand smoke detectors <laughs> all over the house. Uh, they go so far as to try to get e-cigs and they're like sucking on these e-cigs going, they call this a cigarette. They're so mad. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like Patty and Selma suffering a little. Like usually they come in and are shitty and nothing bad happens to them. Yep. Uh, so it's nice to see them like struggling. Oh yeah. They're good. They're, they're usually enjoying they're relishing in Homer's suffering. Exactly. And now Homer finally holds some of the cards. Uh, so they can't smoke, but they figure out, they go into the bathroom. They're like, we'll smoke in the bathroom. They turn on the fan. They put a towel by the door. I'm like, ah, college. And then uh, they they turn on the water so nobody suspects anything. And as soon as they light up, the the water explodes. The whole bathroom uh the the water's on 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 fire and the bathroom explodes all the smoke detectors go off homer sees this as a wonderful victory and takes them to where they can smoke all the time which is the dog track oh i want to go to a dog track in real life me too i've never been Like, like i would go to a dog track do you think they're as scummy as they're portrayed on tv I bet that that stereotype didn't come from nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> I bet someone didn't just decide, yo, let's dunk on dog track people yeah. for no reason. <laughs> like a dog track on like a Wednesday at 1 p.m. Like, Yeah, that's when the, we should go. Yeah. How far do either of us have to drive for a dog track? Is there a dog track in Minneapolis? I wonder. I know there's horses, like carriage racing. They've got to be somewhere carriage racing sounds rad i would yeah. go carriage racing it's just horses they can't run it's weird like they have to do some kind of like it's a basically like horses jogging while pulling a carriage weird it's like competitive walk like speed walking i've been to the horse track here in town in fargo that's you know it's fun it's a fun way to kill an afternoon no one like broke a leg and had to get put down the one afternoon I was there last time. So none, none of your buddies. <laughs> yeah. None of my friends. Yeah. The horses were fine, but one of my buddies got tripped up on the bleachers and it was a sad day for all of us. Well, you're going to miss you, Rodney, but uh, there's nothing that can be done. 
sorry, guys, no, I'm fine. I can kind of limp as yeah. one of us is just loading a revolver. <laughs> Why are you putting all six in there? Yeah. <laughs> you just take one. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun way. To, it's a fun excuse to drink all afternoon in the mm-hmm. day. Like drinking in the daytime is fun sometimes. It's real easy to spend a bunch of money too. Oh my god, I out. bet. <sighs> yep. We made. We had the uh, unfortunate uh experience we all went and for a lot of us it was our first time and we all bet on the same horse on the very first race and we all won and so we thought oh it's always like this <laughs> and then we we proceeded to never win another ticket ever again <laughs> all of you lost year. your 401ks yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> it's adorable that you think i've ever had a 401k they, they have a they have a kiosk where you could cash them out <laughs> yeah they, there's an edward jones booth right there at the at the, <laughs> at the racetrack it's a nice man in a suit <laughs> yeah you're looking to close out like everyone else in line behind you yes okay here you go <laughs> no one needs a roth ira anyway there's a hundred and ten dollars. How long did you work here? <laughs> <laughs> Years. <laughs> They're matching five percent too. <laughs> uh, Lisa off to do some investigations as to like what the fuck happened here uh, because Lisa knows what this is. So, like water on fire means somebody's been fracking. She huh. like pulls up a sad documentary that she's watched. So she goes to what she thinks is the obvious culprit. And to me, that's Mr. Burns, but she goes to the Texas oil man. Mm, yep. Uh, I'm like, okay, I can kind of see, I can kind of see that, but I disagree. I think Burns from the get go, whenever anything bad happens in this town, uh, and it's not the Texas oil man. He doesn't want that. He's not in the game of, of mining natural gas because he can't dance in it. He's in yeah. it just for the dancing. <laughs> and he's got a little miniature oil well in his office that goes off so he can dance in it. Yeah. I like that little touch about the Texas oil man. Uh, it turns out, of course, that it's Mr. Burns. And he is fracking under Evergreen Terrace. And they're like... Where could it be? He has his fracking operation disguised as a women's basketball hall of fame, which is very funny. Like, oh, no one will ever find it because it's in (laughs) this women's basketball hall of fame. They confront Mr. Burns like, ah, you're being an asshole again. Get out of here. And he gets them shuffled out, and uh, Lisa turns to Maxine Lombard, who is a... I don't know, senator, congresswoman, yeah. and politician. She's new, right? We've never had her. I think so. I think she's brand new. I don't yeah. know that we've seen her before. Uh, she is voiced by the one and only Jane Fonda. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Seems like a name. Seems like a good get for The Simpsons. Yeah. Plays this character really well. Uh, she is like a bleeding heart liberal congresswoman or representative. I don't know what she is. Politician. Uh, so she shows up. I like that. She just shows up at the Simpson house. Uh, like as her motorcade pulls up, this is so routine. Apparently that Homer like barely looks up from his magazine. He's like, Lisa motorcade. Yeah. (laughs) And so, uh, they, she puts together a committee hearing, uh, for Mr. Burns and they shut him down. You're done. You're done fracking under evergreen terrace and burns goes into her office to give her the what for and does because they <laughs> bang in the office oh man bird i worry about burns health he can't be taking these <laughs> it's kind of her you know, erotic you know detours healthy enough for sexual activity like Pretty. it says in all of the viagra ads Pretty sure he's a World War One vet, so. Yep, he yep. absolutely <laughs> is. What a hundred and fifteen years old at this point. You know what? Good for him though for still having some lead in his pencil. There for we go. still getting after it yeah. out here. <laughs> that, when we come back from commercial break and see the two of them naked laying under an American flag on the floor in her office is <laughs> pretty funny. Um and so they're like, oh, we obviously can't do that again. What the hell? Because Burns is a fucking super Republican capitalist and she's bleeding heart liberal. But they're like, you know what? We're we're going to keep doing this, actually, because this is a lot of fun. And I say good for them. Good for Maxine. Good for Montgomery. Yeah, I'm rooting for these kids. <laughs> 
So what Burns is going to do, he's not going to give up on fracking under Evergreen Terrace, So, but he needs to buy all of the mineral rights under everybody's houses, uh, and he sets up Homer as his pitch man, gives him like a flannel and some khakis so he looks like a regular working Joe, and it's like, Homer is a regular working <laughs> yeah. Joe, but okay. <laughs> Yeah, the, the uh, flannel was a good gag. That yeah, Homer looks good in flannel. Looks like an everyman. Uh, Lisa super pissed at this. Like, Dad, how could you? Uh, and then we have a a town hall. It's Frank and Lisa on one side giving the like hard science about like why fracking is so bad. And then on the other side, you have Homer who's like, "Yeah, but we'll g- you get five thousand dollars for your mineral rights," which seems low. Yeah, <laughs> I, w- I, I wonder. Like, yeah, I feel like they could have bargained a little bit and gotten a little more. But there, you see, like Lenny and Carl in the crowd just being like, five thousand dollars, okay." And so, of course, everyone's on board. But and Frank and Lisa are left standing there, like, "What?" But we have all the logic. <laughs> <laughs> having learned nothing from 26 seasons of the Simpsons so far, I guess. Uh, it's at this point that like, uh, Homer is, is hanging out with Burns. They're chit chatting and he advises Burns to be careful of this casual relationship that he's having because, uh, at some point everyone, somebody always gets hurt is, uh, is the whole thing. And we're at the, the fracking place. We're going to have a ceremony. Mayor Quimby's there to turn on the fracking machine, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, and Burns is holding that stack of paper and he just goes, Mm, this feels a little light. One of these isn't signed. I like that he can sense that by its weight, <laughs> yeah. that you're missing one signature. That signature, of course, is Marge. She's co-owner of the house and didn't sign, so now nobody gets any money and Burns can't frack. And I love that throughout this episode, Marge will occasionally just go, our water was on fire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a nice touch to it. It was a good gag to keep coming back to. Like, yeah, that like that's the only that's that's her only argument because but, that's all the argument yeah, you need. Yeah, <laughs> the water Homer, shouldn't burn. Homer, our water was on fire. <laughs> I like that a lot. Uh, Burns is super pissed about this, and he cuts it off with Maxine, and so now she is. Uh, uh, scorned she's very angry with burns uh shows this by tearing down his manor in order to build a recycling center slash native american museum slash condor sanctuary yeah. <laughs> like unannounced like just like yeah like wrecking ball just up. comes yep. through the fucking house <laughs> And I love that those are the three things and Burns immediately is like, this is the work of a liberal. Those are, that's a liberal paradise. I love Mr. Burns so much. Uh, Burns fucking fine. Fuck you then. And he goes down to the fracker. um, Maybe that's what it's called. And (laughs) starts it up, fires up the fracker. And now, like, there's earthquakes happening all through Evergreen Terrace. Everything's vibrating and falling apart. And Homer still at Burns' side throughout all this. And then Marge comes running down to the fracker, and he's like, Homer gives some reason as to why he's doing this. And Marge is just like, our water was on fire. Like, <laughs> probably the eighth time she said it yeah. to him. And, he, and it clicks with him, or so you think. He's like, oh... Oh, you're right. And then he stops to explain himself and goes, I think I know what you mean. Fracking is bad unless it's in someone else's town and shuts (laughs) off the fracking machine (laughs) or destroys it. Yeah, he destroys it by getting out a garden hose, holding a lighter to it and spraying the machine with fire (laughs) until it collapses. Uh, and then we get uh, Burns and Maxine. Uh, they make up and they're like, oh, it doesn't matter that we don't have anything in common. We can make this work. And then we get an absurdly long mm-hmm. scene of just them in bed together while the credits play. And it's them having the most meaningless of small talk. Yeah, like both in bed holding magazines like. I haven't been a fan of these like kind of separate little minute and a half ending clips that they do, 
But Agreed. this one, yeah, I didn't mind this one, but like, because some of the, like the examples of things they brought up were good. Like, yeah, like because they're not listening to each other yeah. and they're talking about the most meaningless shit. Like, it was it was a blast. And I also not on board for these little addendums, but I did like this one. And there, I think there's one other one in this batch that I also liked. I was like, okay, we can do these, I guess. Not that they need my fucking permission, yeah. but. <laughs> This I wasn't episode actively angry about any no. of them. <laughs> just in traffic, just full of rage. <laughs> just bearing down on the steering wheel. <laughs> no, no more. <laughs> Sir, why did you why did you drive through that preschool while well, it all started in 2014 when the Have Simpsons? <laughs> <laughs> How familiar are you, officer, with late model Simpsons episodes? <laughs> They started doing this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I like that episode. It was like, you know, as far as uh, like story and jokes, it was kind of fine, whatever. But man, it's just nice to see Mr. Burns on the yeah. screen. Um, I thought Jane Fonda was, like I said, a good get for that Maxine character. And we sling some some Democrat, Democrat and Republican jokes back and forth. There's some decent political jokes in there. Yeah, I was I was fine You're with fine. that. Yep, totally fine. Not a lot of memorable shit, but not yeah, nothing. I was never just like, holy shit, when is this going to end? Yeah, uh, but like. Bullet point number one in huge, bold, all caps typed face, Mr. Burns episode in yeah. season 26. So overdue. Our next episode is episode number six, Simpson Saram Simpsonorama. 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 There you go. There Simpsonorama. Go. Six, Jesus, buddy. Sixth time's a charm. <laughs> so <laughs> looks like we got our Futurama crossover episode. I've heard about that. There was one coming up. What was your gut reaction? The, like the first time you saw the title or when the music starts, what it, whatever it was that made you realize what this is, what was your initial gut reaction? Uh, totally placid. Not like this is going to blow or this is going to be great. Just like, huh, wonder how this will be. Okay. And it's like we got, huh. the, we got like a real Futurama-esque intro. It's like, oh, that's different. Oh, how the about, music. Yeah. How about yourself? I immediately was like, fuck yes, because I love Futurama. For someone who's never seen The Simpsons until we started a fucking podcast about it, I love Futurama. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely. Thought Futurama was a fucking absolute gem of a show. Yeah, I definitely saw way more Futurama before I ever really got it. Well, yeah, just like you. I see. Yeah. And for you, was it through Adult Swim showing reruns of it yep adult swim in college is where i watched most of it that was also you know prime uh tv on dvd land rush yeah, so yeah. everyone had futurama yeah someone made a lot of money off that yeah that uh futurama's outstanding that show's so good uh, the episode begins with bart's class contributing to a time capsule you ever remember doing that? No, I don't know that I've ever participated in a time capsule. I might be forgetting, but I don't yeah. think so. I have some vague memories of being a little kid and like, hey, everyone put something in this box. It's going to get buried somewhere. It's like, where is that box now? Like, I'm sure it's been, fucking yeah, been plowed through. Like, <laughs> just, yeah, they, yeah. They, <laughs> they put in a fucking fiber optic line at the yeah. school and threw it away when they dug it up. How many time capsules have been destroyed with the, just the building of dollar generals in the Midwest? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to say that 99.9% .9 of my time capsule exposure has been as plot devices in television programs. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> they come up on The Simpsons kind of frequently. I feel like this isn't the first one. No. Could, yeah, I know we've seen them before. Uh, apparently, it's just, hey, whatever you want to throw in here, go at it. Because <laughs> we, we get Nelson giving a picture of his... Of his dad robbing a gas station. <laughs> uh, Millhouse, Lucky Rabbit's Foot. 
Yeah. And then Bart, it's because, of course, Bart, he doesn't have anything prepared. And Skinner's like, well, what, you know, don't tell me you didn't bring anything. He's like, oh, I certainly did. It's like a half-eaten sandwich that, like, well, th- that's what you're going to leave for the future. He's like, well, I better make a count. And he blows his nose into it. Yeah, so, blows his nose in the sandwich and throws yeah. it in. It's another productive day at Springfield Elementary. And then we get, I think it just cuts a hard cut to the Simpsons house. Uh, there's a thunderstorm and they're, uh, it's late enough at night. I think all the, the kids are in bed and we hear like a, like a hollering of something falling from the sky a thud. Did you know who it was right away? Yeah. Cause you see his silhouette real quick and you can hear his voice. You, can, yep. you know, he's John DiMaggio does an, an extremely specific Bender voice. You, you know, right away it's Bender. John DiMaggio, also the voice actor for Marcus Phoenix in the Gears of War games. Oh, well, there we go. Fun <laughs> fact: We did it. <laughs> Infotainment. Yeah, that's us. Uh, they hear some clanging in the basement. Uh, Marge sends Homer to go investigate, who he tries to force the job upon Santa's little helper and Bart. They go down and check, and it's Bender of Futurama fame. Drinking yep. Homer's beer, <laughs> of course, because that's how Bender. That's how Bender gets his. That's his fuel. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, Bender and Homer become fast friends. They go to Moe's. We get some, you know, Bender's a robot jokes, like like him figure out a way to get free beer. Yeah, and and then they, they become buddies, and Ho- Homer asks to be his friend. Uh, brings Bender back. Lisa's really skeptical. It's like. How are you? Which it's a good. I fucking hated this episode. What? Top three worst episode of all time. Are you shitty? Easy. Me? It's such shitty, forced, god awful writing. It's so fucking dumb. The vitriol I've had. I can't believe I've held it together this fucking long. I and, I've, am... and I've looked into it. I am certainly not alone. It's, I, it's yeah. I don't doubt that. But you know, but uh. The one of the few things, very few things I liked in this episode was fucking Lisa's like, you're not from the year 3000. You're like shitty. Like, because that's the, one of the, the funny things. It's like, oh, yeah, you're right. Bender is shitty. Like, there's nothing you know, like you wouldn't be made out of fucking tin in the year yeah, he's, 3000. He's yeah. not a technically technologically advanced robot. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so. She brings Frank into the scene so they can figure out more about him. And he pops the lid open in the back and he's like, oh, we got to find out what his prime directive is. It turns out it is to kill Homer Simpson. This fucking premise is so fucking dumb. Continue. <laughs> God damn it. I, the fucking rage is building up. It's and, not dumb. It's Terminator. Uh, you don't like Terminator now? Oh, I okay, don't mind the everybody. killing him. Nathan I don't mind hates the killing Terminator. Him. It's that because... We find out his fucking DNA is attached to this fucking mutant band of robot rabbits that's tearing apart new New York City. Yeah. Fuck me. So you got to go back and and eliminate it. Oh, and then so then they bring the rest of the fucking gang in. And again, I like Futurama. I don't like this. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like <laughs> it, it kept hitting me the waves of bad jokes and forced premises. I'm like, God damn it. This could be good, but okay. I'm a professional. I'm going to continue. Uh, <laughs> uh, so they're, uh, they're all there. Uh, the rest of the future on a team gets a tour of Springfield for some fucking reason. Meanwhile, Frank and Farnsworth. Oh, we get some fucking. Oh, yeah. Uh, Frank and Farnsworth and Lisa <laughs> do some lab work. And it turns out that actually it's uh, right away. It's like, well, we, we, we don't have to kill you. We can kill your spouse. It's like, well, that's not like. But actually, it's it's from one of your kids. So it's like we got to figure out which your kids. It turns out it's Bart's DNA. That is, of course, it is. Yep. Because of the snot covered sandwich that he put in the time capsule. That also, there was like toxic waste. There was a there was a gag there because because you know Burns is there for the uh, for the unveiling of the time capsule, and there, of yeah. course there's toxic waste th- four feet underground <laughs> in Springfield. I like uh, that he's like what that could be anyone's. Yeah. I thought that was fun. <laughs> and like a government inspector's skeleton floats to the top. 
Oh my god. One thing I did enjoy, there's a point, it's it's in Springfield. We see a fucking billboard for a hybrid canyon arrow. I thought that was a nice touch. Oh, I missed that. Yep. It's, I think it's maybe by the courthouse when they when they because that's the the goal is like oh well what we got to do is we just got to go dig up the time capsule now is is like okay we do that we get that sandwich out of there no fucking ro- rabbits are fucking created and they go and they're they're going to go do that but during that time the fucking Bart monsters have now started to mutate kind of like Mogwai's into Gremlins now they're like these little Bart demon looking things. And they yeah. destroy the time machine. So they all get sucked back through the guts. Because basically, Bender is the fucking portal. They all get sucked yeah. into Bender. Except Maggie and Bender. They're the only ones left. So they're they're fucked. Like, well, how the hell can we do that now? Like, <laughs> and Marge, kind of bummed that her baby's not with her. Do you have any takes? So I can, I'm going to go scream into a pillow quick if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so far so far all uh like the very front half of the episode is or the front third i wasn't like 100 percent into because i don't because bender is by no means my favorite future mm, character and i was yep. like i was like let's get everyone else in here because that's what i'm here for uh but after that like everybody everybody just you know, it's fish out of water shit. It's, uh, it's, it's Simpsons reacting to these future people. Like, like Marge, when she meets Leela go in her mind going, don't mention her eye, don't mention her eye because she's a Cyclops. <laughs> and then in Leela's head, her going, don't mention her hair, don't mention her <laughs> hair because her hair is bonkers. That's fun. God, these you, are fun jokes. You bring up a good point. Like one of my least favorite things about Futurama is fucking Bender's shoehorning him in to be the Bart Simpson of the show. It's like the bite my shiny metal ass t-shirt slogan jokes. It's like, oh, and that's yeah, what like, we get so much of in this fucking episode. Like it's and even so in bender Futurama, heavy. He is so rarely interesting. Yep. Yeah. Good point. I'm trying to think of if, if any personality quirks that make him interesting. Like uh, again, it's also been 15 years since I've watched the show. So the intricacies of it might be a little bit lost to me. Yeah, he's, from what I remember, he's mostly there for sight gags and mm-hmm. to move plot along. How are we going to get into this thing? Bender can open it. You yeah, know? Like, his arm can extend. We can use him as a ladder. Or he can bend it, you know? Yeah. Like, there's always that. But, like, at the at the end of the day, you watch that show for Leela and Fry, you know? Yeah. And then the ensemble of everyone else at Planet Express. And, and speaking of Planet Express, that's where they're at now, and they're... The the uh, farmers are like, well, we got to get this thing fixed. But they look out the window. The monster, the Bart monsters are coming. Like they're all basically everyone gives up hope. And it's like, and, and uh, Farnsworth's like, you know, make make peace with your deity of choice. But yeah, uh, of course, Lisa, who never gives up hope, is she convinces them like, hey, we you know we still got a fighting shot. Like, and the the idea is like, no one can control Bart's like I can. So uh, they fire up the, what's the name of the spaceship? The Planet Express spaceship. Does it have a name? I think it's just the Planet Express ship. Yeah. I don't I don't know that it has a name. They fire that up and she is able to kind of like, I don't know, Pied Piper them with her sax playing. And she uses like the space sax from Futurama. Yep. And is able to lead them into the... Uh, in the, the Madison Cube Garden, get it? I always like. I always liked that joke. Uh, you didn't like that joke. Uh, some of this. That's this reminds me of some of the shit I don't like about Futurama, and none of the shit I like about it. <laughs> like, you see, because it's but we we know it as Madison Square Garden, uh, but because yep. it's futuristic, it's Madison Cube Garden. Yep. It sure is. <laughs> it was that on the show. That's not new in this episode. Yeah. And then, like, oh, then, like, shoehorning the sad dog in. Like, hey, remember the sad dog, that episode everyone loves? Here's the sad dog again. Oh, it's... He was waiting outside of Panucci's. Oh, That's awesome. Fuck. Now, why Panucci's is in New mm-hmm. York City and not in Springfield, so it doesn't make any actual yeah. sense but you still or at least i still win ah the panucci dog uh, so they're, they're able to get every single bart monster into the madison cube garden and that buys them time to get the the generator i think is what it is of the time machine fixed up 
And they're able to get it fixed, and the Simpsons go back to modern times, where they burst out of Bender's chest. Uh, so that means Bender, who, uh, you know, can't really... But then how the fuck did he get there? Like, he can't go back because he's the portal. Makes no fucking sense. <laughs> but then how do he get here in the first place? It's so if fucking he's the portal? <laughs> dumb. So fucking dumb. Like, oh my God. It's so like I put Mel Gibson's face, and this is the oh Mel on God. Bender's body. It's so everything's so forced, and then they're just like, okay, well, 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 you know, they. He's like, well, I got a plan for that. He sets kind of like a thousand year timer. This is like the only one of the very, very few things I did get a kick. I like that idea. Like, okay, I'll just power down for a fucking millennia, and they yeah. just and they just throw him in the basement by the like, by the Christmas decorations. Yeah. And which is that canon? Oh my God. Uh, and then we find out that they flung Madison Cube Garden into just fucking into the space and that that it landed on that planet with that angry king and queen lizard couple. Omicron Percy I eight. There we go. Yeah. Who are often planet. like a like they're a villain, but they're, it's not like they're after the Planet Express gang. It's just like we're going to destroy Earth and they happen to be on Earth. Yeah, like, exactly. It's like they're like Galactus. It's like Galactus doesn't hate Captain America. He just wants right. to eat Earth. You know? <laughs> exactly. Like, yep. <clears throat> and then we get uh, Kang and Kodos are coming over as a as a, a a couple's dinner date, which is fun. Yeah, Nathan, it's the Futurama aliens and the Simpson aliens mm-hmm. hanging out. And, and I did like we find out that they're both female. Like yeah, if, that was a fun <laughs> added thing. Whichever of you is the woman, you should go talk to her, and they both go. But my note, absolutely one of the worst episodes of this show ever, <laughs> period, unreal, period, fucking terrible, period. Like, I was so fucking, like, just sickened. Like, just like, in the middle of it, I it was just, Jesus Christ, this sucks. A little bit later, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> This is, my, it was just so fucking lazy. My, my, uh, if I had to boil down my thoughts into like one sentence, it's yay, Futurama episode. <laughs> I was going to say that, <laughs> that it's going to begin with the word yay. <laughs> <laughs> I like this one. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> it has lots of yeah. references to the other show that I like. Oh, yay. Yeah. Just, you're just sitting there licking a giant fry lolly. <laughs> 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 I, I legitimately like a couple of times like like the fir- when the when the we go past and the panucci dog is there i was like ha and get, like pointed at the screen and then later when lisa's playing whatever that musical instrument is from that one real sad episode like the space cello when she was yeah. playing that i was like ah yay stuff from the show i like oh <laughs> yeah and earlier when we because we get to see the rest of the of the planet express ensemble and they're all like communicating and eventually it gets to zoidberg and he's like look i guess everyone gets to take a turn hello okay that's all for me and zoidberg just leaves and you never see him again yeah you're right he isn't part of the he doesn't make it to earth or modern times yeah Uh, i think that's the last line he has in this episode oh my god Nibbler was trying to eat him, but then he poops it out and it's still alive because Nibbler eats things because that's what Nibbler does on the show. Scruffy lost his mustache. <laughs> like yeah. it, w- it was off putting <laughs> seeing Scruffy without his mustache. Yeah, I don't like it. He even says life without a mustache is no life to live. Yeah. And vaporizes his head. Yeah. Blows his own head off. Yeah. Uh, that's fun. What a fun episode oh. for lots of. Lots of just fun stuff for all of us to enjoy. All, yeah. And like, it's just not one fucking good joke to be had. And that's, that's fine. We get lots of episodes now without one killer joke, but just so much bland horse shit fucking jokes. Oh, now, if you want to tell me that 
that this was kind of just pretty lazy fan service and they clearly didn't put a lot of work or thought into the writing of it and just relied on, hey, idiot, you remember this from the other show, right? I will tell you, you're 100% yeah. correct. Oh. But that did not detract from my <laughs> enjoyment. Yeah. See, I don't I don't think I have the fondness for Futurama then. Like, uh, maybe that's like, I enjoy the show, but like, yeah, oh my God. <laughs> it, it's just like the fucking like the stupid fucking like yeah like well wait how did he get here oh wait why is a fucking dog here like oh it's a fucking <laughs> uh, like there's nothing clever and the simpsons is all about clever joke writing like oh it's a, and that, that made me question maybe i don't like futurama i drank a oh, lot oh i was boy. watching that show like but i don't know it's the same a lot of the same people and i like the simpsons so like well when we start our futurama podcast yeah. then we we can see if you liked it as much as you think yeah. you did maybe you'd hate it maybe you'd be yeah, like right? fuck that dog <laughs> yeah. it's not a sad episode at all fuck yeah. that episode meanwhile That's... if i think about that episode for too long i'll openly weep in traffic yeah. and that is a very good episode but it's such a fucking cash grab fan service jerk each other off like oh like it's like, absolutely fan service yeah, this like, whole thing is just fan service like, how fucking sweet was that episode of that show we made 11 years ago <laughs> oh <laughs> Let's say, oh man i was from the get-go i was hyped because they play it's like the simpsons intro but they're using the futurama music and like as soon as you get the music i was like ah hell yeah here we go oh. ain't nothing gonna bring me down yeah. i had to <laughs> skip in my step all day <laughs> maybe it's like i struggle to become really i'm like i'm not a fanatic about much of anything maybe that's coming through here that like i can't look past like the fucking mistakes to to enjoy it. Like, oh my God. I was, yeah, yeah I have, because I think the Mel Gibson episode was like a gut punch in the subway. I wasn't ready for it. <laughs> now that I've had a few bad episodes, I was fucking livid. <laughs> Got your guard up, just like, yeah. mm, nope. Like, I was going to go, I watched this a couple nights ago. I was going to go to bed. Is like, you can't go to bed with that on your palate. You got to refresh the palate <laughs> and go to the fucking next episode. Oh, man. <sighs> well, that episode is episode seven. <laughs> Blazed and confused. <laughs> An episode. <laughs> It's like you're doing an on on the, live on the air for like promoting a restaurant, and a guy just went up and told you how bad a diarrhea he got. <laughs> I shit my pants from the free bread. <laughs> that is terrific. Okay, uh, the next no, I'm shitting my pants now. <laughs> Speaking of pants, our next story is about the clothing drive for the orphanage. So. I can't quit shitting. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to be unflappable. Yeah. <laughs> there are many uh. delicious options at Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> Why is his mic live? <laughs> Who gave him a mic? <laughs> Don't eat the free bread. <laughs> Attention. <laughs> Waving your arms. <laughs> yeah. Half price Apple TV till 7 p.m. Get on down to Applebee's. Don't Whatever drink you the do. Apple TV. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, there we go. Ever had an Apple Teeny? I bet an Apple Teeny is not my jam. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I'm not the best. I don't mind a martini, but yeah. I love a martini. I don't like green apple things. I don't like. Oh no! I don't shit. like like fake apple flavor. Really? Like, oh the oh. oh you want a green Jolly Rancher? Absolutely not. No I, shit. No. 
I will unwrap it and drop it and step on it in front of you. See, as and do absolutely nothing to it because it's a Jolly Rancher. (laughs) 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 I'm going to bring this to my wood shop. I have a drill press. (laughs) (laughs) And then I will show you my true disdain for this candy. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, not not a fan of green apple flavored things. I fucks with them. (laughs) <laughs> hot take i'll save you all my green jolly ranchers so. <laughs> in a pillowcase every christmas <laughs> here you go buddy here's this year's haul things got rough i had to sleep on it for a while <laughs> they've all i left them out in my car they all melted into yeah. one big one have fun <laughs> <laughs> i got like that chisel little trying to chip yeah. off a chunk that, of, of a little Ranger. rock hammer that andy dufresne used to break out a shawshank <laughs> 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 they said it take a hundred years for a man to eat a pillow sized jolly rancher <laughs> Oh, Nathan Volsenbach, he did it one summer. (laughs) (laughs) You're out in the yard shaking bright green dust out of your pant leg. (laughs) (laughs) He doesn't want his mom to know. (laughs) Thing weighs 60 pounds, takes up my whole car trunk. (laughs) Holy shit. Having one big fucking melted ass Jolly Rancher in the trunk of your car all summer (laughs) that you hammer chunks off. (laughs) Uh, You know, a fun trip. You pull over, you fill gas, you (laughs) knock off a couple of chunks of Jolly Rancher and hit down the road. (laughs) Wish I didn't live on a gravel road. This thing's getting dusty. (laughs) (laughs) You're wiping it off. (laughs) Wiping an apple-sized Jolly Rancher chunk on your pant leg. <laughs> I, 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 there can't be this much Jolly Rancher talk without me bringing this up. I know someone who works in a women's correctional facility. And Jolly Ranchers serve a specific purpose because what they do is they get them and they like mush and lick and mold them together into sex toys. Really? Yep. Apparently, Jolly Ranchers are quite the contraband at this particular women's correctional f- facility Man. for that reason. The things people will go just to blast. <laughs> the, just to, the, my, it's my friend almost who's a, inspiring. My friend who's a guard there is like, you have no idea the amount of huge stuck together jolly rancher oh. dildos i have confiscated and destroyed so what do you, do you think they put them in a condom i would hope or just like you know you suck on one for a while and you suck on another and smush them together it's like building a rubber band ball you oh, gotta yeah. start with one you start yeah. small i mean you mold it by licking them but then after you have the mold you gotta put a condom like you can't be jamming that thing up like yeah <laughs> Jesus, I'm not a doctor. But. Well, you go hold a lyceum at the goddamn yep. women's correctional yep. facility and tell them what they're doing wrong. That'll be my like pet project once I become famous. Free your- prophylactics at women's prisons <laughs> so they don't have to put fucking Laffy Tappy up, up their cooters to get fucking off. Like, we need to protect these women. <laughs> That's your <laughs> PSA. That's your... That- your foundation. That's that you what I'll raise money create. for if I'm ever on celebrity. If you, I don't know, fucking who wants to be a millionaire? <laughs> and who are who are you playing for today, Nathan? Well, it's funny you should ask. Yeah, <laughs> hundreds of women are damaging their reproductive organs by <laughs> putting used Jelly Ranchers inside their vaginas for sexual gratification. <laughs> That ends today <laughs> with this game show. Uh, here at Nathan's Candy Naughties, we say no. Uh, I'm glad I got that off my chest. I yes. feel, I feel. Yeah, that was fascinating. Uh, fun facts. <laughs> Episode seven is blazed and confused. It's no, it's no Futurama episode, but I did like this one. Uh, the rage is still there. <laughs> you're turning, you're turning red on this Zoom call, my friend. Like the Chevelle song. 
Uh, <laughs> Uh, we're ha- we're ha- we're having a, a a meeting of all the principals in the school district so they can all trade their shitty teachers, the ones that they want to get rid of. Great premise. I think this is a brilliant idea. I think this <laughs> concept is very funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Springfield gets Mister Lassen, who is a fucking lunatic. Yeah. Uh, like fucking just reaches up and cuts his face open while he's talking to Skinner in his office. Yeah. Jesus. Real, <laughs> How real, fucking Skinner isn't fucking bothered by any of this. He's nope. just, yep. Yeah, okay. It's, Springfield Elementary will take who they can get. Yeah. It took me, I was listening so closely throughout this whole episode trying to figure out who that voice is and I never did guess it. And then at the end of the episode in the credits, it's Fucking Willem Dafoe. I was like, yeah, oh, of course it is. You're right. It is. Uh, it was one of those, you know, like, that happens on this show sometimes. You're like, I know who that is. And yeah. you can't place it. But Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe, uh, to me, will always be Green Goblin. Like, he's a thousand things. But for me, it's Green Goblin. I think no of Spider-Man shit. when I think of Willem Dafoe. I've never seen that Spider-Man movie all the way through. Oh, really? It's... Yep. Fine. It's good. Yeah. That second one is better of the second Raimi very movies. Good. Yeah. Willem Dafoe uh, also, like, Willem Dafoe's fucking good in everything he does, but to me, Spider-Man. I never saw Platoon. I feel like that's most people's. Yeah. If 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 he didn't win an Academy Award, he was nominated for one for that. Oh, man. Yeah. He, but you don't know, you think about it. It's not like he he's a, in a million good movies, but like he doesn't play Santa Claus in a movie, you know? Like, right, yeah. He picks a lot. He, like, had a very, very, one of the better actors of our lifetime. He chooses, he works with so many different people, too. Like, he's always doing, like, he's fucking been in David Lynch shit. He's been in, like, Lars von Trier shit. He, he's the, fucking, he's, yeah. Antichrist. To get this Antichrist fucking, is a tough one. That's yeah. a tough, There's like. Some, uh, unfortunate can, boner damage in that movie. Yeah, if you can That's get all the first... all boner damage is unfortunate. <laughs> they could call that movie boner damage. <laughs> <laughs> boner damage should be the name of that movie or like an edgy GCW tag team. <laughs> There's an alternative cut of Antichrist called Boner Damage and they they portray it as like an 80s teen sex romp. <laughs> Like Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> We're going to the bay. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get peanut laid. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> this summer, boner damage. <laughs> oh, my God. That movie's fucking tough. If you can get through yeah. the first five or ten minutes, I, I think it I think it gets easier from there. Or you change and you just develop a skin in those first five to ten minutes yep. that's impenetrable after that <laughs> he's also he's what else is he's in the lighthouse he's great in that movie yeah that movie's also a fucking impenetrable weird fucking thing but it's fun he's in yeah. your favorite uh boondock saints oh yeah how he you is, feel about the he? boondock saints he's uh in a paul schrader movie called light sleeper which Paul Schrader probably doesn't remember making. I don't know why I referenced it, but it's a very good movie. <laughs> He's a uh, feel... insomniac cocaine dealer, I believe. Oh, well, I mean, we've all been there, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Student loans, man. They don't quit coming. That Willem Dafoe makes relatable films. Yeah, right. <laughs> He's been a, light, a lighthouse keeper. He's been an insomniac coke dealer. He's been a <laughs> megalomaniac fucking <laughs> bent on destroying Peter Parker. We've all been there. Yeah, a uh, uh, drug addled or at least hyperactive detective chasing down Boston criminals. Yep, yeah. yeah. he's uh, he gets us. <laughs> uh, so this lunatic comes into class and he's he's thrown his weight around. Everybody immediately terrified of him uh, for good reason. He bullies the shit out of Nelson. Oh, that ne- exchange with Nelson when Nelson makes a joke about him. And what it's like, oh, you're the comedian in the group. And, yeah. and Nelson just casually, I got a pretty solid 10 minutes. 
<laughs> Where, what kind of what kind of exotic locations does your mother dance at, Nelson? Yeah. <laughs> How quickly he just surmised by looking at that boy that his mom was. <laughs> I love how Nelson has no fucking thick skin at all when it comes to his family. He immediately becomes like like teary eyed, like yeah, immediately uh, buckles. He and then he calls him Smelson, and he's just yeah. devastated. Yeah. Just like, oh. <laughs> she dances. She dances at touch of class, but the C and the L fell off. <laughs> and he leans in close. There never was a C and an L, was there, Nelson? <laughs> <laughs> oh, touch, touch of ass. <laughs> That's a real it's a, classy strip, it's strip a club. Great strip club name. <laughs> great. A touch of ass. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. I love a good strip club name. I, yeah. I like a fun one. There's not enough fun ones. Yeah. I'm trying to think Someday, what they often are. Someday when I make my when I make my billions, I'm gonna open my own. It's gonna be called Marlin's Darlins, and it's gonna be <laughs> a premier fucking destination titty bar. Yeah. Jesus, I found in my travels finding comedy spots. I think I showed it to you. In the middle of rural Minnesota, in a town of 150 people, there lies a strip club. Perfect. What? When are we telling the- jokes there? <laughs> The, what's the economy like? <laughs> that like it's, like a, it's all titty based. It turns right? out yeah, it's a, yeah. the uh, the tit based economy is recession proof. It's been proven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this lunatic, Mister Lassen, uh, Bart has a prank that he's laid for him, and it doesn't. Mister Lassen is unfazed by it and fucking cuts Bart's hair. Yeah, like, like gives him the road warrior hawk. Kid. Yeah. Yep. Gives him a hawk. Yep. Reverse mohawk. Uh, and so Bart super bummed out. He's at the table. Uh, Marge, a uh, distraught. She's yeah. like, I didn't know a teacher could cut a student's hair. And Bart's like, Yeah, they won that right at the last union meeting or yeah. union vote. <laughs> Bart eating dinner with that hat was good too. <laughs> He's so bummed. He hates this so much. When he does finally reveal his haircut, the whole family just fucking dies laughing yeah. at how ridiculous he looks. Um, at that dinner, uh, we kind of reveal uh, kind of the second part of this story, and then it all comes together later. Homer didn't reserve a campsite for Labor Day weekend, uh, and Marge is upset at that. She, like, has this miniature little mental breakdown of, like, <laughs> why do I ever trust him to do even the smallest things? <laughs> Homer pours all of the gravy out of the gravy boat onto his pork chops. Pork chops back again. Second yep. appearance of the batch. <laughs> and when it's empty, he spins it like a fucking revolver and puts it in a holster that you can't see. That I thought was an extremely fun visual yep. joke. Homer <laughs> with that fucking gravy boat. Gravy boats only on television. Never seen, never seen or used a gravy boat out in the wild. Yeah. If, yeah. I don't think I ever have either. Someone Gravy right now boat, on, also a pretty good tag team name. Someone right now on TV is playing hopscotch while holding a gravy boat just to spite us. <laughs> while wearing full grown man pajamas. Yep. Uh we get back to school. This lunatic punches a hole through the chalkboard. <laughs> Mr. Lassen is a menace. Yeah. Uh, he, he has that big electric ball like you would get at Spencer's, but he sets the <laughs> setting intentionally, sets the setting too high and electrocutes Bart. <laughs> he sets it to agonizing. <laughs> At one, at one point during this scene, like Nelson says something and Milhouse is like, shut up, Smelson. And <laughs> Nelson's like, oh, no, it's sticking. Yeah. <laughs> Again, how quickly how, how he gets sad so quick. He's so shattered. We've we've broken Nelson uh, in this episode. Uh, so Bart has has tapped into the security cameras in the teacher's break room and seen uh, a quick little exchange between Lassen and Ms. Hoover. And so his plan is he's going to make a fake Ms. Hoover Facebook page. And then when, when Lassen accepts the friend request, then he'll have access to Lassen's Facebook and learn everything he needs to know about him. And then they can get him. So this is Bart's elaborate plan. Uh, 
he finds out that Lassen goes to uh oh shit what's their fake burning man blazing guy blazing guy yep which is fun uh i have a friend who goes to burning man every year no shit yeah she loves it like works the works on the shade crew like so she like works it she doesn't like go for fun but like she drives a fucking truck that has a big awning that unfolds for people to have shade and oh really it. Yeah, has a blast. And that's not to say that she's working all the time. I think there's a fair amount of drugs getting done, even when you're working. (laughs) Because providing shade, not labor intensive. No, you just drive the truck up and pull the things out and now there's shade. Do one of those hand clap things like job well done. There we go. Lick a poison toad. (laughs) And drugs. Yeah. I think you and I should go to Burning Man and do comedy. I bet that's the primo stand-up comedy space. Just a couple of hand-knitted leather thongs. I was going to say the way we always dress. Just (laughs) slacks and a button down here to tell my jokes. (laughs) No, one of us does that. The other one didn't get the memo. So I show up in the leather thong with like Road Warrior Hawk style shoulder pads. <laughs> Face paint. Yeah. Half my head shaved, the other ornately braided. <laughs> no shirt on, nipples yeah. chained together. <laughs> oh, we should, we should have messaged beforehand. So airline food. <laughs> I thought you said you're just going to go take a piss. <laughs> Come back looking like that. <laughs> That's some very interesting vendor booths. <laughs> so this is when we kind of bring these two together. Marge is lecturing Homer about not having found a camping place, and Bart bails him out by being like, hey, I found us a spot. So the Simpsons are going to Burning Man. And this is, like, I was pretty hyped for the front half of this episode where it's like, Awesome. Let's see Bart deal with this nightmare teacher. Mm-hmm. Get some comeuppance. We're finally back in the classroom. We're doing something without Edna Krabappel around anymore. Uh, and then the second half of this just becomes an episode about Burning Man and making yeah. Burning Man jokes, which are pretty fucking low hanging fruit. Oh uh, yeah, I I didn't really think of it till now, but now looking at my notes, you're right. The second half of this, the 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 jokes get real thin real quick. I would way rather see an episode where home, where Bart has to deal with a teacher who's really got his number mm-hmm. than an episode where the Simpsons go to Burning Man. That being said, I didn't hate the second no. half of this, but it was still good. Visually a lot of fun. This strikes me as one that I bet was fun to draw if you were one of the animators. Oh, totally, yeah. Uh, they're at Burning Man. They're struggling. The tent blows away. Uh, Marge uh, accidentally drinks some, I'm assuming, mushroom tea. Uh, I like that Lisa is super into this because mm-hmm. Lisa's just like music and free expression. She just loves being at Burning Man. Yeah. Like not for the drugs, but just for the the unbridled expression that ha- is happening. And which is funny because, you know, flash go back. Jesus. 22 seasons ago, it was Lisa that was always tripping balls. Yeah. Didn't that yep. run where Lisa was always accidentally getting high? Yep. Getting and, the, or the just big a, pupils? Yep. Or just addicted to things, period, like yep. the Corey hotline? Yep. Yep. Jesus, that's a throwback. Yeah. Uh, speaking of throwbacks, we get a long Marge drug trip sequence, which I think I mentioned this in past episodes. I like this kind of thing, like in animation. Like, it's one of my favorite parts of Beavis and Butthead do America. The yeah. fucking the <laughs> desert scene where yeah. they do all the psychedelic shit. And speaking of throwbacks, the motherfucking space coyote yeah. from the <laughs> that Johnny Cash played in that episode yeah. where Homer is high in the desert shows yeah. up. I wish they'd have done more with him, but at this point, Johnny Cash is dead, so they just have it kind of walk across screen while a bunch of other shit is going on. Yeah, that was but, a nice touch, though. Like, I immediately was like, there he is. There's the fucking space coyote. Yeah. <laughs> uh... This uh, this Lassen guy is like the chosen one who gets to set the big wicker man on fire. Uh, so Bart finds that out and then hoses down the statue with flame retardant so they can make him look ridiculous. And then he won't be the teacher anymore. I don't exactly know Bart's line of logic here, <laughs> but 
He's just out to spite this man. Uh, so Lassen goes up, tries to start it on fire, and it won't start. He's being ridiculed. People are jeering at him uh, naked, by the way. So as part of his punishment, they clothe him and wipe <laughs> his face paint off. I thought yeah. that was funny. Uh, and then he sees Bart and realizes he's got something to do with this. So he goes chasing after Bart. They go up the statue. Uh, and then the statue or wicker man, wooden person thing collapses. Uh, and we get back to Skinner's. And Skinner's like, we finally are able to do something we've never been able to do. Fire a teacher. Which is yeah. like, <laughs> man, you guys are taking some shots at teachers unions yeah. in this episode. <laughs> Maybe back off of the unions, guys. This isn't going to age well in eight years. Uh, so he gets fired. And then he's like, well, I'm just going to go where my skills are appreciated. And we see him as a prison guard. Yeah. And then, that, that's more his speed. Yeah. And then I thought this was great. He goes walking past a cell and Sideshow Bob is in there throwing darts at a picture of Bart Simpson. Yeah. And Lassen's like well, we should team up and they should have left it there. That would have been like a fun little nod. That would have yeah. been like a fun Marvel movie after the credits. thing. Yeah, it's a good point. But then they hang on it too long and like, oh, well, who gets to who gets to stab him? Well, maybe we'll take turns. Oh, well, then I'm out and they you know, we just go to credits. Yeah, so I was like, ah, you, you came pretty close to having a second good addendum in this match, but it was just okay. Because yeah, sideshow, sideshow Bob is a, you know, he's a he's a diva. He wouldn't want to share the the spotlight with yeah. anyone. Yeah, it all fits. I just yeah. I just but did. you're right though. It would have been neat just to leave it like oh, like plant that seed. Exactly. Maybe you come back to it. Maybe you don't. But yeah, they. I thought they wasted that opportunity a little a bit. Um, it was fun. I really liked the first half of this episode a whole bunch. I thought yeah. it was very good. Uh, and then the second half is fine. Yeah, I would agree with that. That first half carried it. It's at and least visually interesting in the second mm -hmm. half. They do, like, I think making fun of Burning Man is super fucking lazy because um, it's very easy to make yeah. fun of Burning Man. Agreed, uh, yeah. But at least visually, it was a lot of fun to look at. And I think in episode eight, how's that for a segue? Look at we this. Might, we might get an opposite where I think the episode is better as it goes along. I really enjoyed where this one went. Okay. Oh, that's a that's that's a that's foreshadowing. There we go. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, let's see if we can agree on this one. The title is of the are the uh, name of the episode is Covercraft. Episode begins with Mo catching goddamn King Toots illegally using Mo's dumpster. Have we ever seasons. seen? Yeah, ever seen King Toots? I don't think so. Nope, we have never once seen yeah. King Toot. <laughs> and so as I think happens with businesses, it's like, hey, man, that's my dumpster. Don't use my... So there's some back and forth there, tempers raised, all of a sudden the cops are involved. Will Forte, perhaps the voice of King Toots? Immediately recognizable as King Toot. Yep. yep. That, uh, that was the opposite of that Willem Dafoe one where I immediately was like, yep, that's Will Forte for sure. Yeah. Uh, I love that King Toot has this insane plan where he's like making space by throwing away musical instruments because he's going to move in some tanning beds that secretly have cameras in them so he can sell, you know, subscriptions to his uh, weird pervert fucking cam <laughs> streaming site. Yeah, unbelievable. Jesus. I mean, he, he looks like a creep and by God, he is a creep. And what am I missing here? How does this segue? Are are Homer and Lisa at King Toots when they're music shopping? Yep, they're, Lisa's carrying her her I think her violin, either that or her saxophone. Oh, it is her saxophone. Lisa's yeah. carrying her saxophone, and then she's like, "Oh no, King Toots is closed." Yeah, because they <laughs> fought through it and broke that, a fucking window out of it. Yeah, and then they go to like a guitar centery type. Yep, and that's where it picks up. Oh, I guess we got to go to a soulless big box music store, and it's yeah. clearly Guitar Center. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and what is she looking for? Is, it, is that specified? 
no not really she just kind of like they make one quick joke where everything is guitars and then she finds the woodwind section and it's got like three things on it and she just kind (laughs) of oh and then we go to homer from the rest for the rest of the episode where some some guitar center salesperson smells blood in the water like oh dopey middle-aged man perhaps hitting a crisis point in his life and then yeah. he puts them on because he's like, you don't have thin fingers. You got what is like thunder nubs or something. Like, <laughs> you, you need to play the bass guitar. <laughs> we it's, get uh, yeah, yeah. so fucking many good bass guitar jokes. Right? <laughs> and uh, I love how much they upsell him on shit. Like when they show him at the cash register, he has like a fucking fog machine. There's so yeah. much inside. <laughs> he's like, uh, "How are you doing on? How are you doing with gels?" He's like, "I uh, don't want to uh, seem foolish, but I don't even know what gels are." <laughs> Just like how Homer is so open to whatever they have to offer. <laughs> oh my god, this salesman is such a fucking shark. Yeah, and Homer <laughs> is just the perfect prey. And just like, has Homer just strum that one fucking note on the bass guitar while the salesman picks up an electric guitar and shreds out this fucking solo? And Homer is so <laughs> pleased with like, I I helped, I did yeah, that. Like yeah. Homer is so sold on being a bassist <laughs> immediately. <laughs> that guy's like, you're like the best bassist I've ever seen. Yeah, he <laughs> and Homer's says, like, just you're, with it. Yeah. Even just right now, just from that, you're one of the best bass players of all time. It's so funny. Uh, do we ever, or, or uh, is the is this a TV thing? Like guys, do pe- men get into picking up musical instruments for a midlife crisis? If you told me that that it it could be lumped in with getting a sports yeah. car or a tattoo i would believe you i don't know that i can point to any examples of it yeah i bet like i was i was on board immediately oh yeah yep you know it makes it, sense to me yeah like the one thing i was thinking of, it seems more of a empty nest i got time to kill hey there's my old guitar from college yeah i could see that too yep because what we find out too, like yeah, like that uh, Marge is sick of the fucking bass in her. Because <laughs> 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 not only do we get like jokes dunking on bass guitars or bass players, we get like sight gags of like Maggie vibrating away when she's getting her diaper changed because Homer's playing bass. Yeah, I <laughs> love the visual style of all the like vibration jokes. Like everything yeah. just has a little wave to it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and. We want to spit like, like that's what I enjoy too. Like, like usually it's always the drums. The drums are what drives someone nuts in a house. But yeah, nope, we got we got someone getting fed up with somebody playing the bass. <laughs> so Marge meets the other wives at a place called Zers, which is terrific. So good. It's an appetizers only yeah. restaurant. All we serve is appetizers. There's a there's a somewhere we see an ad where it says try our entree sizers. <laughs> yeah, what a, so, so is, good. Yeah, so yeah, that was very that that whole concept was good. I but, would eat at an only appetizers restaurant. If you went to a restaurant and it was like, what am I having for dinner? mozzarella sticks onion rings and corn nuggets like yeah. i think that's great yeah that's the that food will put you in an early grave but god is it good oh yeah i would have nightmare dumps pretty yeah. immediately <laughs> but worth it zers home of the nightmare dumps <laughs> <laughs> that's what they call their sampler platter that has yeah. everything <laughs> A, they make like the fry cooks were like like hoods <laughs> like they're very <laughs> ominous <laughs> i was uh, gonna say like et suits like yeah. radiation suits uh yeah there are very few healthy options on the appetizer maybe some chips and dip they're not healthy but they're not deep fried at least fucking uh, when spinach and artichoke dip which is 95 percent liquid cream cheese is yeah. your healthiest option ah. <laughs> it's a bad part of the menu yeah <laughs> no shit to the death valley <laughs> spinach and artichoke are both healthy words yeah <laughs> now with two percent spinach yeah i'm just gonna eat a brick of cream cheese by myself yeah 
But um, Mar Jesus, that sounds good. <laughs> 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 I like I love a cream cheese based dip, but in large part I'm not a cream cheese person. I'll never oh, like put cream cheese on a bagel. Oh That's no shit. My, uh, oh man. That's my favorite part of that bagels. I'm, I get that I'm in the minority, but <laughs> for me for me a bagel is either eaten raw like a donut without even putting it in the toaster or uh peanut butter. I hope That's, they make you go back in the employee break room, if you ever eat a bagel like that at a restaurant, <laughs> like, I bet, I bet ninety five percent of the bagels I've eaten are raw out of the bag, eaten in the like tub. a donut. Yeah. In the tub. <laughs> Is that a bad day at work? <laughs> you got your you got your sadness starch in a, like in, in your bathroom above the toilet tank. <laughs> Okay. Boy, I like. <laughs> mm, I have I have eaten a raw bagel on the toilet in a hotel this month. Okay. Like that has a hundred <laughs> in the last thirty days. <laughs> I, I because like in my head I was like that's very silly, Nathan. And then I was like, fuck, Wait I have second. for sure done exactly that See within you? the last thirty days. We're all we're, we're all thriving in our own ways. They're so soft and chewy. They're delicious. Uh, <laughs> so Marge learns from the other wives that all of the husbands have now picked up a music habit and they're all annoyed by it. And one of them has the idea like, hey, why don't we just tell them to go jam at one person's house? That means at least three out of the four of us will have or four of the five of us won't have to worry about all this like racket and they think that's a good idea they get introduced and let's see if i can rattle off the band it's homer on bass yeah it's kirk van houten on keys dr mm-hmm. hibbert on drum drums and lovejoy on guitar you got it and i thought that i thought lovejoy on guitar was a nice touch because every goddamn pastor knows how to play guitar i thought the exact same thing because in my head i was like I think Lovejoy on keys would make a little more sense because there's always a piano in church. And then I was like, mm, at this point, though, reverends are playing guitar to be yep. the cool reverend. They, 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 bigger churches, they do the minor leagues where there's the youth pastor. That's where you start. And to reach the kids, you got to be able to play Michael Roy, your boat ashore, apparently. <laughs> so they all, they all get that acoustic guitar when they finish seminary. Uh, and right away, they're like, I'm not really working out. I like how it's okay. Hey, I think it's Hibbert's like, what's our comma? Like, what are, what do we all like? What's our favorite kind of, kind of music? And what do they say? Is it hard driving rock or something like that? Yep. Like, like, like a total, I mean, I like that kind of music, but like a total dad genre. I like that this is what they play because as we haven't touched on in fucking years on this show, Homer loves classic rock. Yeah, we have it. You're right, though. That hasn't come up in a while. Well, you know, part of it is just rock music isn't culturally big anymore. So there's probably rarely any reminders of it that they can make work in an episode. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so they're, uh, they, they start jamming they're, they're, but then, you know, they don't got vocals until Apu shows up and Apu's like kind of sheepishly, Hey, is there any way I could maybe sing and fucking Homer's like, well, we, you know, no offense. We don't want to play world music. Like Jesus, Homer, Apu's uh, lived here forever. <laughs> yeah. He's been in this <laughs> Homer, like he leans, he says the phrase world music so fucking many times. You're like, yeah. Homer, good God. This is so accidentally racist on Homer's <laughs> part. Like, what are you doing? But God damn, if he doesn't have just the perfect voice for singing like real big rock ballads. Yep. Yeah, voice of an angel, that Apu. Uh, they named their group Covercraft because it's like a hovercraft, but they're singing cover songs. Yeah, there's a, there's a gag where they discuss why that why Homer thinks that's a good name, and the fact that it it's a pun on hovercraft. He is the one he didn't intend. Yeah, he's like he's like, oh, I never thought of that. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, they begin touring locally, doing uh, I think it's uh, is it Cabbage the Cabbage Festival. Yeah, yep, uh, the <laughs> Springfield Cabbage Festival. Because because uh, Apu's got stage fright. He's sitting on a pile of cabbages, which I thought was great. 
And because he doesn't like, he doesn't think he has it in him. But then Homer has the idea, hey, you learned how to sing these songs by being at work. Put your work uniform on underneath your jacket. That'll give you the confidence, which I don't get it. But God damn it, if it doesn't work, he's out there belting out those hits. Yeah. Well, the you, one hit. The yeah, same the, hit. Oh, yeah. Over the, and over. Is it Sun Gazer is the name of the band that they, the yep. fictional band. Uh, did you notice when they're playing the local festivals, we get a glimpse of Sideshow Mel's family? Yeah. And they're, and they're all, all cavemen people. Yeah, right? Yeah, like we need to find out more about this. <laughs> Hopefully that gets addressed later on. And But yeah, they're playing that same Sun Gazer song over and over again. And things are going great. They, they all love being in a band. Uh, then until one day the actual star sun gazer band shows up and offers Apu their lead vocals. I think they saw an on like a YouTube video of them performing of yeah. Hovercraft. So of course, I think Homer's are like, ah, we know I'm sure Apu appreciates the offer, but we're, this is all that Apu, Apu needs. And Apu's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like I have eight screaming children. I will do anything to get out of the house. So he is now a member of Sun Gazer, who was a right away. I thought they were going to sell it as they were like a just scraping by classic rock. Hasn't been relevant in 40 years playing the cabbage festivals of the world. But no, they have a jet. They're like a big yeah. band. They're a big deal. Yep. So God. And so, oh, go ahead. Sorry. And correct me if I'm wrong, isn't this kind of how the new lead singer for Journey got to lead sing for journey was he was in a journey cover band and they found him online or something like yep. that. That sounds right. Yeah. And that was the, that was the first thing I thought. And didn't Judah, that guy that Judas priest had in the nineties, he was like a cover band guy. I think you're right. I think he was a Judas priest cover guy. So yeah. they put him in the band. Am I wrong? Or is journey for the first time in like 30 odd years back together with Steve Perry. Oh, okay. That I didn't know. I don't keep up on my journey news yeah, like I should. You, you don't get direct like pings on your phone from journey.org. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't have a journey.org <laughs> notification set up. I really should. Yeah, you're missing out all the journey gossip, the hot tea. <laughs> uh, from don't stop believing dot biz yeah. has been sending me updates. Angel fire dot. Uh, <laughs> Is there anything? <laughs> Angel fire. <laughs> Jesus. Your your personal journey fan page that you built in 2001. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Marlon. I think journey rocks. <laughs> 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 it's got the it's got the little visitor counter at the bottom yeah. that's on ah, like six. Yeah. <laughs> They're all me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, is there anything you could have seen farther away than Homer being way too salty about this? No kidding. Just like, the of most course Homer hates this. On brand Homer can't accept that someone got something better than him, you know? And clearly, Apu was the fucking talented one in the group, you know? Like, he could truly sing. So Homer, is, he wants, you know, he wants Covercraft to keep on going. And he like, there's a good scene with him and uh, Bart where Bart doubts it. And he's like, we're going to be like Genesis after Peter Gabriel left. And we get like some <laughs> weird deep dive Genesis shit, which I found <laughs> funny. <laughs> I love that Homer has real hot thoughts about Phil Collins Genesis. Yeah. Like rattling well, off mostly, album cover. Yeah. Album titles. Like. Yep, songs and album titles. I'm with Homer. Phil Collins' Genesis is better than Peter Gabriel's Genesis, for sure. I've never d delved into the Peter Gabriel shit, but I fucking Genesis with Phil Collins. That's some good songs. I fucking yeah. love Phil Collins. Yeah, Phil Collins is great. I don't care who knows about it. <laughs> Deal with me. <laughs> so, uh, cut to Covercraft uh, jamming again, practicing. And Homer is just a pouty bitch. And just on a pure saltiness just disbands the, the, the band. Like yeah. he's like, he kicks everyone out. So it's just him. And they're all like, fine, whatever. This isn't even fun anymore. Uh, but, uh, and to pour salt in Homer's wounds, Sungazer comes to Springfield and Apu, good guy that he is, 
generously gives like, I don't know, like VIP backstage type tickets to the Simpsons, which Homer is still pissy about. I think they Marge maybe like talks him into going like you have to go like. Yeah. And he's pouting the whole fucking time. And they have an incredible seats. In yep, yep. Oh, yeah. Well, we get real peak shithead Homer right now. Uh, and, oh, Jesus Christ, we're not even there yet because he, the show is a, it hasn't started yet. He sees a chance where he can get backstage to fuck with Apu. The goal is he's mm-hmm. going to steal the Quickie Mart uh, uniform. That way Apu is going to suck on stage because that's kind of almost like his security blanket. I don't know if there's a better way to call it that, but it helps him perform. Uh but while he's there, uh, he's kind of hiding in the dressing room as Apu enters. And you can, Apu does not like being in the band. It's a ton of fucking work. He's miserable. But the rest of the band confronts him and badgers him like, hey, man, you signed a, like a three-year binding contract. You're the yeah. lead singer of Sunglazer. And so, of course, Homer, Jesus, Homer's shitty. He's like, oh, this isn't good? Well, then I'll be your friend again. What a fucking garbage person. <laughs> And, but, I mean, I guess at least he helps Apu, like, think of a plan of how to get out of, how to get out of this. So yeah, he, he does come around. They, they call upon Apu's Quickie Mark connections. And is that his brother working when they call, do you think? Yep, Sanjay. God, yeah, we rarely get to see Sanjay. Jesus. Yeah, I, remember, I, remember Apu's brother from 25 seasons yep. ago? Yeah, like, because aren't they business partners right away or something like that? Like, they're like, I there's an so. episode where he talks, you know, like, yeah. Uh, so the the plan is is to poison the rest of the band with rancid Quickie Mart hot dogs, and we get a video of the hot dogs being procured. And my God, Quickie Mart, you gotta oh, do better. Boy. Uh, that. I, I don't know if you saw this in the news, but uh, Fargo just had a gas station that got shut down for uh, 48 hours because of their of the poor conditions of the hot dog area. No shit, really? You know how low that bar is? And you can somehow <laughs> sneak under it? Like, like I guess what it was, they found, like, animal droppings. Like, what, like a fucking horse get in there? Like, like rats? Like, I want to know what animal droppings. Like... <laughs> How bad does your gas station hot dog area have to be to get shut down? Because <laughs> yeah, like, I have been in some, you can't even look directly at it so repulsive, and like, or you will not be hungry anymore. Yeah, I've seen some nightmare hot dog areas. Yeah, and I have Ugh. taken and eaten hot dogs from nightmare hot dog areas. Of I course you have. Not above it. I, uh... When they show that quick little montage of them collecting all the hot dogs <laughs> and one of the hot dogs is the fucking is the toilet paper roller spindle in the bathroom. <laughs> so ridiculous. Jesus. <sighs> what are we doing, guys? And mission accomplished. The rest of the band is doubled over in the dressing room, sicker than dogs. And Al Poof fucking nice guy that he is goes on stage lets him know hey everyone sorry the show can't continue as scheduled but hey i'm gonna bring some friends up here and we're gonna we're gonna have a show for you anyhow and god damn it if covercraft doesn't get on stage and they start cranking out that one hit song having the best time and what i thought was a great like i don't know if editing or directing where it's them the music is them playing and they're on stage having fun but eventually other things start happening the music's still happening we don't get any sound otherwise but we see fucking Wiggum and the other cop doing forensics on the hot dogs, <laughs> and they both give each other a knowing nod, and then we see them arresting Apu and Homer on stage. Yep. Them getting let off stage was so fucking good. Jesus, and they're just Christ. sitting in jail afterwards. Yep. Oh, then we get Sammy Hagar is in it too. <laughs> like, <laughs> this was the other okay. You guys can do a good one of these. This, yep. you're right. This yeah, addendum 
fucking Sammy Hagar telling a story of a dream he had. And he's like, and then I came to doing 155 whipping donuts in Springfield Elementary parking lot. And the, the G force made me pass out. Like what the fuck, Sammy Hagar. Uh, and I like that Mo and King toots are in jail too. I forgot yeah, about yeah. that. It was a nice tie. It all back together. Yeah, it was fun that we did that little Hagar thing. Voicing yeah. himself, they got Sammy. Uh, yeah. Earlier in the episode, the first time Sammy Hagar comes up, because Homer, when Apu goes and joins Sungazer, Homer's like, why would the rock and roll gods do this? And he looks in the <laughs> sky, and there's John Lennon and Jimi Hendrix and someone else and Sammy Hagar. And he pauses, and he's like, Sammy Hagar, you're not dead. And it cuts to Sammy Hagar getting the Heimlich maneuver at the <laughs> on the beach. And he, he finally coughs it up and he's like, I told you there was too much breading on those jalapeno poppers. <laughs> and then, yeah, oh, yeah. Any of this, the Sammy Hagar scenes were good. And the the waiter who just saved his life apologizes. He's like, "Oh, don't apologize. It's okay. I went to rock and roll heaven, and there was a sweet tiki bar set up on the beach with a with a great fire pit. But only if you had the right wristband, which I did. Uh, yeah. Oh, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I imagine saving Sammy Hagar's life and it ends up being a boring experience? Like him just going on about some terrible dream he had. Oh my God. I told you those jalapeno <laughs> poppers had too much breading. God who who would do that? <laughs> who would get jalapeno poppers, inspect them, and then call the server? I just want you to know I'm oh going to eat God. these, but there's too much bread in also, like, he's clearly on, like, a beach, like, an all-inclusive, and you're eating poppers? I loved every part of that Sammy Hagar, both uh, Sammy Hagar things in this but, fucking episode. Holy shit. Yeah. And, of course, he's drinking a giant margarita. That's his thing. Yep. That's his deal. Yeah. <laughs> Very Ooh. good episode. Easily, hands down, my favorite episode of The Batch. I was yeah. being deceptive earlier when I was cagey on Did I Like It Too? Yeah, I fucking love this episode. This yeah, is great. This was... And again, one that got better as it kept going. Like, Yeah, I liked all the, like, you know, ah, oh, the dads form a band. That's a good idea. And then, like, like oh, Apu does the, the journey thing and gets taken out of the band, and now Homer's jealous and shitty. Like... It was, it was a good episode. Fun little Easter egg, if you noticed, in the dressing room on the wall, there's a little frame picture of the B-Sharps. Yep, their nice. acapella group. Yeah. I did notice that. Where Homer got his fucking Grammy. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, that was fun. I like that episode a lot. <laughs> that fucking Sammy Hagar shit. Oh, my yeah. God. And this... Uh, this episode starts with us getting introduced to King Toots. Yeah. <laughs> just a just a sleaze ball. <laughs> Amazing front to back. This episode's great. There's so much random shit like that. Like they can just you know, hey, wait a second, we've never done this. Let's why not do this? You know, like yeah, like stuff that you'd never would have thought of or ever considered. Like that super early episode where we find out like the Simpsons other neighbors and shit, you know, like yeah, like the divorced mom and the yeah. teen girl that that Bart likes, yeah. Or there's like never saw like, them again, I don't think. Other rando houses in the neighborhood, like there's the one with that old lady, like that like yeah. I don't, one of the kids does something with. Yeah, it was a great great episode. Yeah. Fun all around. E like I said, easily my favorite of the batch. Even more than the Futurama episode. Ooh. High praise. <laughs> <laughs> for me, yeah, I like that one. I, I refuse to things. apologize for it. <laughs> I like Let people stuff. like things. <laughs> <laughs> I just love how much you hated that episode. Yeah. Yeah, to the point I became the comic book guy and looked it up online 
it was like, uh, is it just me? <laughs> I can't be the only one, right? Yeah. No, that episode screams, I bet Simpson fans hate this. Yeah, yeah. What are the other ones that come to mind? I can, I know that like the the Mel Gibson one is known amongst Simpson like as oh that this is the door slamming shut on the golden era like huh but I don't th- know uh, off the top of my head I don't know what else uh, the only or- thing I can think of is there's just some seasons around like season like nine ten eleven or so where I think the quality goes down because you can tell like. They got shook by South Park, and Homer is like too crude. Yeah, like too he crass. Cu- he cusses some and stuff. It's like, oh boy, Simpsons, you're better than this. Like, yeah, they for sure tried to to chase that a little bit there. I bet I I don't know for sure, but I bet that we talked about that when we were covering it. Yep, we so yeah, I remember that. Yeah, but like, but specific episodes, there's just ones that are duds, but I've always wondered, like, what are the other ones that are known among Simpsons? I bet they're like some other celebrity ones. That's like, oof, this is pointless. Sure. Like, or maybe some of the travel ones I could see people. Oh, very good point. Oh, like they were on a deadline. Where haven't they been? Look at the fucking Atlas quick. Like, yeah the atlas what the fuck like <laughs> dust off the Rand mcnally atlas <laughs> holy shit good on you i was trying to pull the name Rand mcnally and couldn't do it so good work Top thank marks. you <laughs> let's see if we end on a high note Episode nine is I won't be home for Christmas. We get a Christmas intro and I always think those are fun. Yep. There's a lot of fun little Easter eggy type things, a little hidden fun pause it and see type things. Yeah. I like, uh, I think my favorite bit was uh, that Marge and Maggie, when they're driving home, they're driving a sleigh that's pulled by a bunch of Santa's little helper dogs Mm -hmm. and up alongside them pulls crazy cat lady with a cat sleigh. Yeah. We get uh, uh, Burns and Smithers in a, a led by uh, their his attack dogs, his hounds. Yeah, uh, who's the fourth? Is it the cops? I don't remember, but there who's is the a fourth, fourth one there. Yeah, You're right. yeah. Uh, so it is Christmas Eve. We're at the power plant. Well, we start at the power plant, but we kind of go around here, around town. We get comic book guy, still married. I forget his wife's name, yeah. but still married. <laughs> I like that we touch on that real quick. <laughs> and he's just losing his mind about how terrible the Star Wars uh, Christmas specials and how she just sits there like, your rage is warranted. <laughs> like, just yep. just uh, saying exactly what he wants to hear, you know, like. And he, because remember, she loves that. She loves yeah. nerd star, snark out of him. Yeah. Like, and he's like, this is just as awful as the last time I saw it, which was yesterday. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so good. Have you ever seen that thing? I know that thing has like a, a bit of a cult mentality to it. No, I haven't, but I've heard it's, it's something else to witness. Yeah, I also have never seen it and I don't intend to, but I know that, you know, that makes its way around. Uh, we get uh, Hans Molman, who we've also not seen in forever. Yeah. Uh, opening a Christmas card from Dr. Hibbert, which is so <laughs> insane. Because on the front, it's like, your test came back positive. And he's like, oh, no. And he yeah. opens it up. And it's like, for holiday cheer or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, oh, yay. And then there's a note inside and he opens it up and it's from Hibbert. It says, but for, seriously, your test came back up positive. <laughs> Call me first thing January 3rd. <laughs> just, just sit and dwell on that for nine days. Yeah. Uh, Homer's headed home, but he swerves to miss a bundled up woman pushing a, a baby carriage and, you know, crashes into a snowbank in front of Moe's and goes into Moe's, uh, th- says something about maybe a beer will help my driving. And then we see the lady takes off her shawl and it's Mo, and he just sets the baby carriage on <laughs> fire. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about starting it on fire. That's a nice touch. And he's like, ah, oh, geez, those things really go up quick. Yeah. <laughs> I love that this is how Mo gets fucking customers on Christmas yeah. Eve. Jesus. Or just friends. He's so lonely. Like, Yeah. That's where this leads is Homer like has a beer and is like, okay, I got to go. But Mo is so fucking lonely. Like just begs Homer not to leave him alone on Christmas yeah. Eve. 
Uh, so Homer takes pity, hangs out with Mo. Uh, we go, we cut home. Marge is pissed that Homer is not home yet. God damn it. It's Christmas Eve. Uh, back to Mo's they're drinking, they're singing. And Mo's like, Mo is smiling and he has like an internal thought of, Oh God, this hurts. And he puts a <laughs> corkscrew into his head and turns it a couple of times to get his frown back. Yeah. And he's like, Homer, this night has meant so much. Tell you what, as a gift, I'm going to set the bar clock to what it actually is. And he yeah. turns it like two hours ahead <laughs> to 1130. Uh, so Homer freaks out. Oh, God, I'm super late. Homer gets home. Uh, Marge is venting to Patty and Selma about how shitty Homer is because he's not home on Christmas Eve. And when he finally comes in, Marge loses it and throws him out. Justifiable, you know. You yeah, gotta, sure. you gotta be home on Christmas Eve. That's yeah, that's some day that, one shit. Yeah, you should you should be better, Homer. Uh, we cut back to to Moe's and Mo finds Homer's wallet, and now that I'm reading that note, I don't think that's ever addressed ever again. Other than Mo being happy he found a wallet. Yeah, you're right though. Is it ever addressed again? Like, he makes one quick joke because he opens it and pulls out Homer's license, which, by the way, is suspended. It says on yeah. it, <laughs> "work from work to home only. And then he's like, uh, it doesn't highlight it at all, but he goes, wait, 237, who's this guy kidding? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's a fun, quick joke. I remember his height is six even, too. Oh, I didn't you're wondering that. how tall Homer is. Yeah, well, now we know. Yeah. Uh, that means Marge's hair is so ludicrously tall. Yeah. She's like eight feet tall with her hair. <laughs> it makes no sense. Yep. Uh, one thing earlier, I can't remember if it's in the bar or at the Simpsons where they're choosing some kind of Christmas playlist or something. We get a Vin Scully Christmas and it's just recently deceased baseball announcer Vin Scully talking about the holidays. Yeah. <laughs> which, like while calling a baseball game. Yeah, yeah, which I would happily listen to. I find him very soothing. Yeah, I, I like the dude's voice. Yeah. Very sad. Like, I'm not a huge, like, I didn't cry or anything because I'm not a big enough baseball <laughs> fan to be, like, emotionally connected to Vin Scully. But I know enough about baseball to know that he was good at what he does. Yeah. And I think he was, like, 94. So it's it's tough to shed many tears for a man in their mid-90s passing away. Yeah, <laughs> dude, that's Dude true. won the, the genetic lottery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lisa and Bart are worried about their parents because they can hear Marge crying next door. Uh it's, and then we get Marge downstairs by herself uh, putting uh, popcorn strands together. And I have right here, popcorn strands, just a thing on TV, <laughs> question mark? I I've think, never seen a popcorn, what is it, popcorn garland, whatever you would call yeah, that. I think I've seen that or done something like with that at school or at church once okay. or twice in my childhood. Of, Seems that, very silly to me. Why? Where did yeah, that come from? Yeah, yeah. Like, why are you putting f hanging snacks on the wall? You know, like, <laughs> why not like just hot glued Doritos onto a piece of particle board? You know, like just hang that up. Like, <laughs> I like. I would wager that most customs that seem silly, if you actually looked into it, the answer is always the same, which is. People at some point couldn't afford Christmas decorations and corn was cheap. So yeah, this good is what point. we did. Like, yeah. I feel like that's every everything you're like, why do we do this? Turns into, oh, because capitalism's bad at yeah, the end of the like, day, you know? Or some depressing, like, well, you know, the rats that spread the plague didn't like popcorn. So that would yeah, keep so them away from your house. <laughs> plague rats don't like popcorn. That's science. <laughs> and a t shirt. Yep, they hate popcorn. <laughs> a lot of our t-shirt ideas are statements. It's like, yes, it's a, yeah, it's a sense. Mom. Moms love Doctor Mario. <laughs> <laughs> popcorn Play grass hate away. popcorn. <laughs> Maybe we should actually instead of having t-shirts as merch, a self-help book. 
just tips. Yeah, just life tips. Helpful yeah. tips <laughs> yeah, to get through we're, life. We're certainly the people you should be taking life advice from. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. The the two of us recording an episode of a Simpsons podcast in 2022 on a Monday afternoon because yeah. neither of us have jobs. Yeah. <laughs> Hard working men. <laughs> <laughs> a podcast that garners us zero dollars. <laughs> Labor of love. Yeah, we're here for you. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, uh, Mo comes down the chimney and tells Marge that he's the one responsible. He's why Homer didn't get home till late. Uh, and and Marge is like, "Oh, I gotta find Homer." So now it's a it's a it's a hunt for Homer. Uh, she tries to call his phone, but his phone is in the car and dead, and his car is being towed away. And the tow truck immediately like hits a fire extinguisher, is covered with water and encased in ice. Yeah. <laughs> There's Homer. a great line. I think it's around this time. It's when when Mo was at the Simpsons house. When, like, you know, Marge is, oh, my God, we got to find Homer. This And, and Homer, or Mo just plops down on the couch and has the remote. And it's like, you guys don't have Showtime Extreme? <laughs> <laughs> Which is such a <laughs> random ass thing to assume a family would have. <laughs> And that is, if Mo Sizzleck's personality could be a TV channel, it would be <laughs> fucking Showtime Extreme. Also, it's insane to think that you would be upset that someone doesn't have that. Like, yeah. it, it's so <laughs> insane that you specifically wanted yeah. that movie channel so badly. <laughs> yeah, that's a good joke. Yeah. So now Homer is just kind of wandering around town all bummed. We get a long montage of him like going up to places just as the closed sign gets flipped or the the neon light out front gets turned off, you know, just just bumming around because uh, things aren't open on Christmas Eve and he's been thrown out of yeah. the house. So what's he going to do? This kind of this episode captures how eerie things kind of are on Christmas Eve. How mm -hmm. dead, because like, there's a couple times I've actually driven home all Christmas Eve and through the night to get home for Christmas Day. And it's like the radio's different because no one has a DJ. It's all like, you know, plug into some national programming. And like, if anything's open, it's just a complete skeleton crew. Like, uh, highways yeah. are absolutely empty. Yeah, uh, the Christmas Eve is, is a weird time, especially if you like are out trying to do anything. Yeah. Which, good, close and let your employees be at home for Christmas Eve. Yep. Yeah. In, North, in North Dakota, small towns, the bars can't be open, which oftentimes that's the only business. <laughs> yeah, that's usually the one. They usually book us for comedy shows. That's 60% of the shows we play are bars where they're the one business in yeah. town. <laughs> Think of that. Is your very good point. Yeah. It's like the, uh, they, they have like three loaves of bread for sale because they offer a few other things like that. Yeah, exactly. It's the only place to get food. And by that, we mean we have frozen pizzas and one pizza oven. So yeah. don't everybody come at once. <laughs> so Homer bumming around town trying to find something to do or a place to go, but everything's closed, but not the movie theater. I don't know that that's a real thing, but OK, movie theaters open. Uh, all of the movies are sad and he decides <laughs> to go to a Seth Rogen and Jonah Hill concentration camp movie. <laughs> and the poster is the poster is the boy in the striped pajamas, except ah, good. Yep. one of them is dressed as a soccer player holding a soccer ball. And the movie is called the most beautiful game. Yeah. Are movie theaters open on Christmas Eve or is that a Christmas night thing? I think they're open on Christmas. Like, I yeah. think going to a movie on Christmas is a real thing. Because right away, I was like, yeah, they, they would shut them down for the week. But I was like, no, wait a second. There are some families that have a tradition of, yep. it's like, hey, you know, we're done with everything. We had a, you know, we had a late lunch, early dinner. Let's go to a movie at six o'clock, you know? Yeah. Some movies open Christmas Day. You know God, what I mean? Good like, point. You see that all the time. Like, opening yep. Christmas Day. Yeah, yeah like that, a, so that's a real thing. Like a big PG family or action type thing, like a like it's like a Pirates of the Caribbean type movie where the kids can go. Like, yeah, I think traditionally James Bond movies usually open around Christmas. Also, oh, no shit, huh? Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, which you'd think they would be 
summer blockbusters. Yeah, but. right? Yeah. Just dads that are sick of dealing with holiday nonsense go off and have a little me time. Yeah. I love that Homer goes into this theater and you think he's alone, but the camera pans out and he's not. It's only the other losers from around town. <laughs> yeah. Kirk Van Houten, obviously. Kirk Van Houten. Gil is there. Uh, is it Crazy Cat Lady? Yep. Oh, my God. There's two or three others, too. Yeah. there's. I think there's a couple I didn't recognize. There's only, like, five people there. but Yeah. And Homer, like, kind of looks around and is like, ah, this is pretty sad. And he's like, here you go. And I think he gives Gil his popcorn. And Kirk Van Houten goes, oh, Homer, you're so generous. Can I have, like, $10,000? Yeah. What a thing. Loan. Yeah. <laughs> what a thing to ask. <laughs> Bit of a conclusion to jump to. Uh, Homer leaves and then he comes across Ned who's having a fucking tough time. Ned is closing up his, uh, closing up his left-handed Emporium cart. Cause remember he's <laughs> at a, he's on a kiosk now. Yeah. Like his, oh, you're right. His, yeah. We touched on that. However, many seasons ago that his store closed and now he has a cart in the mall. <laughs> this, uh, like I think all of this Homer around town stuff is really just Homer at the mall, but I'm so thrown off because the idea of an outdoor mall blows my mind yep. and I can't comprehend it. But he goes up to Ned and Ned's having a tough go of it, but he's open because he's like, yeah, hey, Christmas Eve is my biggest, my biggest day of the year. He's like, I, I sold three scissors today. And then <laughs> under his breath, he's like, two of them came back. <laughs> like, <laughs> He's been paying uh, a mortgage for 20 odd years with that as the primary income source. Yeah. And Ned's all bummed out. Uh, like, you know, he mentions Edna. You know, we we touch on Edna real briefly. Uh, he's having a tough time. And Homer is like, Homer buys an eyelash curler just to cheer Ned up. <laughs> and then they hug. They have this nice moment. Yeah. Like, good on Homer doing Christmas good. Yeah. And like Ned's response, like, well, Homer, you have beautiful, naturally curly eyelashes. Why would you ever need? (laughs) And then it dawns on him that he's being nice. Yeah. Yeah. And then like they have this long hug and he's like, oh, we're going to be friends forever. And then it shows Homer just bolting. He like takes off and runs. (laughs) And Ned unfazed is like, boy, my best friend sure can run fast. (laughs) Yeah, that was good. It's real good. Uh, Homer crashes out on a park bench. Uh, and so we got the rest of the family out looking for Homer. And there is a depressingly long shot. Uh, I thought it was, it was a real, it was like poignant and funny both at the same time. We stick on the emptying, the empty parking lot of the old folks home for so (laughs) long. (laughs) Like they hang on that empty parking lot for so long where at first I was like, wait is, and I was like, oh, this is fucking perfect. Actually, this is great. Uh, And the Simpsons pull up uh, eventually and they go in there and (laughs) grandpa's so happy to see him. And all of the old folks are like coming out of their doors, just like, oh my God, visitors. So they're all hanging out. Uh, They're all psyched to see the Simpsons. Uh, so they get hung up there for a while in their search for Homer. Cut back to Homer. He's aggressively woken up by a man in a nutcracker a nutcracker outfit. Uh, I don't know that I have ever encountered the nutcracker in real life. I've never seen the play. I've n- I don't know that I've ever seen one of those nutcracker dolls in real life. I know someone that has one. I can't think of it now. Oh, it's a mutual Do- friend of ours that name dropping on this podcast would make no sense. Okay. Are they practical? (laughs) Are you meant to open nuts with that soldier man? I think you can. Yep. I think if you are someone who enjoys some walnuts or something, I think they work pretty slick. A bowl of shelled nuts, a thing in, in and around your households. Oh, my grandparents. Yes. I've been 30 years, 25 years since I've enjoyed a handful of, there's like a big bag of mixed nuts that you got to crack yourself. Some of them, you can give yourself a hernia trying to crack, too. Yeah, man. Some of them are tough, and they're messy. You make a fucking mess yeah. eating shelled nuts. That's unironically a tub food. <laughs> Do that in the tub. <laughs> 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 
so many of them are not worth it. I don't like uh, f- the work that it takes to fucking open a walnut. I don't care how much walnut is in there. Yeah. Ain't enough. Nope. Good point. Yeah. That, what you know? What you're left with? A walnut. Yeah. No one. No one's psyched for that. That's your grand prize at the yeah, end of right. this. A <laughs> walnut. I'm gonna say a walnut is like a D tier nut. I'm yeah. not a fan. <laughs> like perfectly fine in things throw a walnut in a fucking brownie and i'm cool with it but yeah. just sit and eat walnuts like a psychopath i'm gonna say like a brazil nut or an almond is a good one to get out of the bowl mm-hmm. if you're there early before somebody takes them all i think brazil nuts because they're not everywhere you know like walnuts are popping in and baked goods you're you're, you're stumbling into walnuts and and even and i do prefer an almond but but brazil nuts you know you, you almost got to get them at a big in a big burlap sack at your grandma's house <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're like the baja blast of nuts <laughs> they're very exclusive <laughs> brazil nuts the very first things i'm fishing out of a can of mixed nuts like planters mixed you know party nuts oh like really brazil nuts the first thing i'm pulling oh, out of there i'm a basic bitch eating the cashews out right away i'm i mean i'm all for a cashew also but yeah just the all right, you know what I like? Well, fucking just a bag of Planters salted peanuts. Planters has got peanuts figured out. Mm, I'm not. I don't really? like peanuts that much to Amanda, just eat peanuts. We need to talk about this beforehand so we get you on board so we can get some of that sweet Planters, you know, product placement money. Hey, Planters cans cashews too, or mixed <laughs> nuts. Planters, Planters got their fingers in a lot of nuts. Yeah, like yeah. it's. Each of us has to have a monocle in next podcast. (laughs) That's part of our contract. (laughs) How hard it is. Well, we're recording these now, (laughs) so so they just get to hear us complain about how uncomfortable we are. (laughs) (laughs) The 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 macadamia nut is the king of the nuts. That's that's hands down. Like pretty tough. Fuck off out of here with anything else. I'll rock a filbert or a hazelnut underneath that Brazil nut cashew. Those are up there. I think you imagine filbert, but that's cool. I don't think anyone's <laughs> ever had that. <laughs> I think that's a I think that's a colloquial name for a uh, mm. ti- hazelnut. Oh no shit! Okay, if I'm not mistaken, there's a colloquial bit. name for Brazil nuts that I'm not going to say on a podcast yeah, that we, goes we, out we, onto the we, internet. I enjoy being somewhat employable, so we will stay away from that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need my family getting drunk into this. No, nope. have to issue a press statement. <laughs> They're real good, though. I do like them. Fucking just sitting eating peanuts, really? Okay, yeah, all right. I mean, not like a shoebox full, but just like one of those little <laughs> skinny bags you get at the gas station. Oh yeah, I'll rock some peanuts. I'll eat a bunch of peanuts and only peanuts if I'm like at a bar that has a tray of shelled, you know, sit and crack them. Yep. Oh of yeah. Nuts. But to just eat a fucking bucket of peanuts. But there are some people that, like, they're psyched when they see the peanuts at the bar. I'm not that guy. Like, hell yeah, free peanuts in the shell. It's like, well. Fuck yeah, nuts. Yeah, but the bar is set low. (laughs) I get to do all the work uh, myself. I would, and I get to throw them on the floor like an animal? Cool. (laughs) There's some people that get way too much joy out of doing that. Yeah, I would way rather have a, a bowl of pretzels or something on the bar, but yeah, I ain't going to be mad at yeah. I ain't going to be mad at peanuts in the shell. So this nutcracker comes along <laughs> and takes Jesus <laughs> takes Homer to a weird holiday party of like like people who have to work Christmas oh, basically. Yeah. You know, like a lot of people in mascot costumes and shit. I feel like the end of this episode just barrels towards the end with no fucking rhyme or reason. Yeah. Uh, Homer eating, you know, eating a big gingerbread house and and like having that moment of like this party is fun, but these people are lunatics and I wish I could be at home with my family. And then Marge shows up and apologizes to Homer for assuming that he was in the wrong uh, and how she won't do that anymore. And that's the end of the episode. Yeah, you're right. It's almost like, oh, shit, got to wrap it up, you know, and then. But you know what? They didn't have to wrap it up because yet again, we get one of those little 90 second addendum things 
I can't even remember what it was about. I just, in my notes, like, oh, yeah, we got another one of these. And guess what? Not funny. Yeah, it was so not memorable that I didn't even write it down. Yeah, so. thank God. And they're and they're getting that commonplace that you don't even have to bother writing down anymore. It's like use that time to make the episode better. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I could take or leave this Christmas episode. I didn't think this was very good. I, I didn't. I, I think maybe I was a little bit higher on it. I'm kind of a mark for Christmas episodes, so But you are. You are generally. If one of us is going to be, you are generally the one who likes the Christmas episode. So just a real Christmas slut. <laughs> that's what. <laughs> that's what I'm always saying. Yeah. <laughs> it's a real, real horror for the holidays. Oh, see what I did there. <laughs> <laughs> two hours in and the zings are still piping fresh yep still got them <laughs> hey oh well you'll you know have what? to save go ahead we did it we did do it you'll have to save those zings for next week buddy well, i'll put them in the zing holster yep <laughs> zing. <laughs> Yeah, dressed up, dressed up in my poster. littlest cowboy costume, <laughs> my tiny little cowboy hat, tilted to one side, <laughs> comically oversized uh, chaps. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to do it for another episode. Are if you we, still on the cowboy thing? If we okay. ever have merch, okay. you and I have to go to like a fair that does the old timey old west pictures that you sit in on and we could mm-hmm. sell posters of that because <laughs> none of those clothes are gonna fit us yeah that's oh my god that'd be depressing <laughs> like that's the thing every time i see whether it's cowboys or like or like you know 20s gangsters or whatever one of those dress up photo booths i'm like yet another thing i cannot participate i in. never thought of that yeah that you're just Choose it from some musty ass clothes a million sweaty people have put on. Yeah. But you're right. But like, like nothing for us, buddy. Yeah, that's why we came dressed. No, pick something out. I understand that's what people normally do, <laughs> but we can't. <laughs> oh, come on. Put that vest on. No, that's the one thing that I guarantee <laughs> won't fit. That we would have to just lean into it and just put on stuff that clearly doesn't fit but yeah. looks the most ridiculous. <laughs> like like us doing that is just us dressed like we're dressed now, but with cowboy hats holding toy pistols. Like yeah. that's exactly <laughs> that's, what it's going to be. I'm kind of into it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, me too. I'm pew, on pew. board with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got one pistol. So one of us just has a finger gun. <laughs> I was fighting over it all the time. <laughs> In a low rent photo booth. Pew, 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 pew. My turn. <laughs> you got it for the last one. <laughs> It'd be fun. We will do this again next week for some fucking reason. Five episodes of The Simpsons, season 26, episodes 10 through 14 are the episodes that you should watch and the episodes that we will watch. You know, if you want to watch other ones, too, that's cool. We're not we're not your regular teacher. You know, we're the cool summer school teachers. You watch what you need to watch. But if you want to pay attention to the episodes, you need to watch 10 through 14. That's what we're going to be doing. Yeah. Uh, you got any shows coming up that you want to talk about, buddy? No, sir. Just another week of sweating. Attaboy. Well, Mid-August. Sweat week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> August is uh, August is a tough time. It is. Uh, we You can find us on the internet at Barley Basket USA on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. BarleyBasketUSA at gmail.com is the email address. 10 through 14 of season 26 for next week, and we will see you then. Bye, everybody.